thanks for joining us again today. We're here with another 5x5. We're here with Scott Guthrow from Kojiko Business Solutions, and he's here to help us answer the top five burning questions of internet service provision and the technology around that. Uh, Kojiko is a great organization that brings everything together for you. And having that insight is we brought Scott here to be that expert because he has to deal with many aspects of your businesses and how to help make sure things are getting done correctly. And hopefully with all that efficiency, everyone can benefit from it across the board. Scott, tell us a little bit uh, well, say hi to everyone, yeah. and then just tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi folks, Jason again, thanks for having me uh, on the 5x5. Five five. Uh, so I've basically been working at Kojiko for just around four years now, um, and I've been in the business solution side of things the entire time, and it's a great gig. You know, I get to meet a lot of cool customers and work on a lot of challenging tasks, and you get to meet a lot of cool people, and uh, it's a very rewarding job, and uh, yeah, you get to create great partnerships. like. IT Force and Coach Co. And uh, yeah. Are we cool people? <laughs> We're cool people, I think so. Okay, We're on good. the internet. We're happy. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good, good, good. Um, so we want to get started into into the, the questions. Um, before that, uh, again, Jason Stitt, co founder of IT Force, here with Scott Guthrow. Um, and I just want to mention a little bit about our mission, and that's why we want partners like like Kojiko. Is our mission is to, to support a thousand people who, who make a positive difference. And to do that, uh, we're bringing on businesses to help us grow. So for every 10 businesses, uh, 10 people from a business that comes, we're going to support a not-for-profit with our services. Because time is, you can do money, but time is our, and this is just a little bit about us before we get into you, sir, is time is the ultimate, right? That's the ultimate sacrifice, right? You only have a limited amount of it. So we figure we're experts at what we do, so we're going to help not-for-profit organizations. So for every 10 people who come on to our managed service plan, we're going to start offering one seat at a not-for-profit at no cost. So they Very can generous. go wow. and get back to do putting that money to their services. Yeah. You know, whether it's a community care, well, Camp Maple Leaf's our first one. And we have a video you guys want to see about Camp Maple Leaf and how we're affecting them. Check, us, check it out online on our YouTube channel. Um, and with that, I just want to get right back into Scott and Kojiko, and let's get into some questions here. So question one, which is always on the plate, and I just dealt with a couple clients on, on this, mm -hmm. is how, how do I choose? How do yeah. I choose my ISP, telecom, all this technology yeah. provider? You yeah. know, now I know there's only maybe five major, and there's some minors playing in it, but talk to us a little bit about how someone would go about choosing their provider in in that space. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I do get this question a lot, and a lot of people think it's all about price, but at the end of the day, it, there's a couple of things that you should think about when you want to uh, choose your internet provider. Okay. Um, one of the main questions that I think is, can this business provider, or the, can this internet provider support my business? Can they support my business model? Am I asking, a company that only provides service to Google's and to huge enterprise level companies, or are they able to deal with a small to medium customer as well? So the so, flexibility, the dynamics exactly. of that entrepreneur, because they, they move quick. Exactly. Right, where an enterprise board of directors takes time, big plans, exactly. right. Okay. Um, another question you want to ask uh, is, do they have actual local experts and local teams that can actually help you? When something goes wrong, are you waiting on the phone to talk to another department, to talk to another department, to talk to someone else in another country who's gonna leave, you're gonna have to leave a voicemail and they get back to you? That's a bit troubling, yeah. you know? you want Because it's time sensitive. Exactly. Usually, right? Exactly, your business is your main priority. Everything's invested into it, and when things aren't working, especially as an internet provider, it's extremely tough nowadays. So always ensure that they can react properly. So, and that's helping with the speed. Like right now, I just got an email from a client about 30 minutes ago. Koja goes here right now, putting us mm -hmm. up to the one gig by 50 service mm -hmm. down in Niagara. Yeah. And, and, and I'm like, what? <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, I called them up. We need to get ready for the NCOV and get remote workers going. So we had to up our exactly. service and you guys were in there fast exactly. getting the service done. So I was like, okay then. <laughs> and you want a company that can work together like that because you want local technicians that know the area you want yeah, yeah, yeah. people who know the businesses and are experts on these solutions that can work with the businesses in the area. And does knowing the area also get technical with the text, like what's out on the polls and what's 
in the de like I don't know enough about it, but does, is there an effect on that? Like, so a, a technician going to that location, he may be familiar with the environment in that area as well. That's correct. Okay, like just I've because it gets uh, tech. Like I don't know about yeah. it, but I'm like, is there value in? It's not just what's on the outside of the business too. It's also what's on the inside of the business. Like if it's a shared building and that as well. But okay. even like the previous business owner's phone system. I've had times oh. where a technician may know more about a customer's building setup than the actual customer. So because the phone system didn't move, like a tenant exactly. left, a new tenant came in. Same technician for ah, 15 okay. years. So that's right? the local value. Yeah. And that helps them get up board, get on faster because that person knows what's going on. Exactly. Okay. And um, the last one that I want to touch base on that you should ask yourself about your internet provider is are they trying to help you grow your business or are they trying to take every dime out of your pocket? Are they auto-renewing your services or are they reaching out to you and saying, hey, we've got a great new service, we think this can help you? Are they sending specialists to try and talk to you and, and help you actually grow your business? And I think that's an important factor because it's not always about the money, it's about trying to collectively grow and like you said, Jason, is support as many businesses and as many people as we can. Yeah, if the, if the return of investment there, it, then it's there, right? Exactly. So the price isn't, it's about what you're going to get for that investment. Excellent. Wonderful, Scott. Thank you. Um, so, so what we did answer there was kind of how to choose a provider, which ultimately becomes a partner. So that, those are exactly. three great uh, areas and pillars about being having a great uh, telecom and ISP per, uh, partner. So another question that you brought up that you really get it, uh, asked about it lots is, um, what type of internet do I need? And I, of course, my clients are asking that night, Sunday night, I was working with a client. Like, yeah. How, what speed do I need? What you know, I'm on, I'm on wireless. Yeah. Do I go to Kojiko? What are the benefits? So I did the, the math about the ROI of if everyone gained five minutes of active time and, yeah. and, and the reliability of the cable versus the point to point, um, because there, you know, there's the, you know, there's the fiber, there's the cable, there's the, the DSL, right? Yeah. Over the copper, there's the microwave point to point, there's the satellite, you know, there's all these options depending on where you are mm -hmm. you know the further out you go I guess it limits your options and sometimes you're stuck Absolutely. and you're gonna take what you can get but as you get closer to popular zones or supported areas you're gonna get options so now talk to us a little bit about that how would someone mm -hmm. go about choosing those options yeah obviously I'm gonna start with your last sentence there about availability you oh, need okay. to know what's available in the area okay. you know if you're living way up north somewhere very remote, chances are there's not going to be cable or phone service there, right? You're going to have to rely on a, a cellular or mobile Right, and I didn't mention right? that. The six one, there's a cellular connection. Right, so yeah. as you get closer to the city core, there's going to be cable readily available, phone lines readily available, and people have started building in the past 15 years fiber. Right, right, which right. Is fiber, which is optical, right? Exactly. That's over glass. Glass over, light over glass. Yeah, okay. Exactly. So there's different types of solutions over different methods and transportation levels. Um, obviously, there's different costs and different benefits. So before we go too technical, there's some real questions that you should ask yourself. And I've wrote them down here. Okay, good. But uh, I just like to go through these. Um, how many employees and devices will actually be connected to this connection? Okay. So that um, helps bandwidth, like what's the load? Exactly. Okay. And that leads into the next question, okay. which will help you decide, how much bandwidth do I actually need? And is upload more important or download more important or is it equal? And, that, and some people don't understand the difference. Like, yeah. when do I need something? And, and that could be another question, right? But mm -hmm. quickly upload is when someone's coming in and needs a resource, like a remote access resource, a VPN into a file, Correct. the upload delivers that to someone outside the building, which yeah. could be an employee or a salesperson or on travel, right? And it's getting it to them. Download is for everyone when they're in the building. Yeah. And they're pulling it down. Yeah. And of course they work, they, they, I, technologically they work together. Yeah. But I noticed you guys, you're heavy on the download and you yes. scale your upload to, ba to balance exactly. on that. If you're going that much download, we'll give you this much upload. Typically business needs more download. Right. People are bringing information to the business. Yeah. Right. Everyone's working inside the building. However, there are some instances where you are uploading 
massive files and you need to be able to massive move that files, while right. still maintaining business operations, right? Or video conferencing. Video conferencing. Right, you got some people example. connecting and you're bringing out some video. Exactly. Yep. If you think about uh, music studios, when they're moving right. massive audio files, they need to be able to have that upload. Well, so, any of those creative market, like marketing, hey, take a look at this file, take a look at that file, and they're putting exactly. it out to clients. Clients need to get to it, so they're pulling it down. Mm -hmm. Right. So once you determine how many users and how many devices, you can make a, a, an estimate, basically, or actually find out how much that device uses bandwidth, yep. and you can sort of plan out how much you actually need to so, be constantly running. To be honest, how many people do the math or just throw, <laughs> just throw, just give me the best, you know? Exactly. How many, what would the percentages be? Would be uh, maybe 10% maybe of the people actually do the math and the rest just like, just give me the fast stuff. Exactly, and to be honest, that's why most providers do download because they can, the they, equipment is easy to recreate right. and people mainly use download. Right, so now, like, okay. if you wanted to go to a more custom solution where you had different requirements, then, it would be different. Sure, right? a different very prices. specific industry, a very specific exactly. purpose, you're gonna dig deep. But if you're an info worker environment, yeah. you're just like, give me the speed and all. And we'll, and, but you can upgrade too, right? Exactly. Yeah, okay. Right, and um, which kind of leads into my next question about being able to identify what your business needs is, um, how much would 24 hours of downtime cost me on my busiest day? And is internet actually mission critical for my business so it's an it's a it's a an experiment or a process that if you can say if on monday was mm -hmm. your busiest day and you had no internet and yeah. you were down what would a monday look like what would it have happened right exactly. and you let them go through that exercise exactly to to understand then you can go level of urgency exactly okay so that's a good so the question would be pick a business like counts it's April 30 or it's March 31, right? Whatever yeah. those key dates are. And the internet's not there when you get the, when you get into the office and it's not available for the day after. Go. What does that look like? Exactly. Okay. And you need to consider not only the operational aspect of it, but the financial impact of it. If you have, uh, if you're mm. on a live bidding service, that's say you own a construction company and- Or LTL. This is actually one of my customers here. Oh. They are a live bidding, or they're a construction company that rebuilds bridges. Okay. Internationally, massive bridges. That's and they, huge. Italy and Europe and all across the world. If they have down internet and they're unable to make that bid, they just lost on a- Because it's time sensitive? They, exactly, they just oh. lost on say a $100 million contract, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so they how can much quantify is it cost pretty you? good, yeah. Exactly, is it worth Spending a little bit extra money for a custom solution that meets your needs? I think so. Right. And right? Uh, LTL, like uh, transport companies, they're beginning, they're, they're bidding for their loads all the time online. It's, it's all live. Right, that's all live loaded. Get that, go, 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 da, da, da. Right, so. And you think about it, it's 2020, there really should be no excuse. I mean, yeah. the internet is definitely not what it used to be. Right? Um, another question I wanted to, or the, those two questions about how much would it cost for downtime, as well as, is it mission critical leads into the question of, do I need a dedicated connection? Is it mission critical? Is it worth the extra money for me to have guaranteed service for a certain amount of money a month? Right, so talk a little bit about what yeah. is dedicated versus business level service, right? Because that's how you guys classify them. Yes. Am I correct? Yes. Okay, so talk talk about dedicated and talk about business and just the pro, uh, yeah, for help sure. understand a little so bit. So we're gonna start that. with the regular package that most people are familiar with. A copper coax cable comes into your building. We offer you, um, say, $100 for an internet connection. And when you bring in that copper cable into that building, you're only paying 100 bucks. And we try to service as many customers as we can on these shared lines, yeah. right? So those connections are shared over copper and coax. Now, when we offer a dedicated solution that we monitor and guarantee the service for and the traffic on it, yeah. that's done over a fiber optical. Okay, strand, so you guys, it's right? not only, it is a change in medium. Yes. So you are going fiber, so dedicated does equal fiber. Exactly. Okay. So let's talk about, um, you, you, we've talked about the questions uh, that you need to ask yourself to figure out the, the importance mm -hmm. of the internet. Uh, but now they, they're presented with like types of internet. They're like, 
Well, here are the two. Here are the two main options you can choose from. Yes. And from what I understand, one is dedicated, yes. and one is like business level services. Yes. So just talk about the difference. Yeah. Uh, to to us about what what's the difference between a dedicated service and, yeah. and what comes with that, and why would you choose that, and business level gotcha. uh, services, and what kind of why would I choose that one? Because mm. I know one is like this much money, and one is about this much money, and I'm like, yes. well, that's cheaper. However, what am I gonna watch out for? Yes, so when we come to these two solutions, it's not apples to apples, it's definitely different. Okay. Um, if we're gonna talk about a dedicated connection, this means that internet is mission critical for your business. You can't survive any downtime. Um, you need guaranteed speed, and you need guaranteed support. Okay. So, obviously there's a little bit more of a price increase, but you're willing to eat that cost for the guaranteed service, and what comes with that is a guaranteed speed. Okay, so your, your minimums are always gonna be met? Exactly. Okay. So if you subscribe for 100 megs of dedicated internet, you will be getting 100 megabits. And that's both, both ways, right? That's correct. That's, what do they call that? Symmetrical speed. Symmetrical. Speeds. So whatever you're getting down, you're getting up, which we correct. talked up and down just earlier. Correct. Uh, upload, download. Yeah. Okay, good. So with that, with those guarantees, we package it under an SLA, a service level agreement. Okay. So you get the guaranteed bandwidth. We include the hardware for you. You get a dedicated team during installation, as well as a dedicated tech support team that is for those dedicated customers. Okay. Now, you also get, if something were to happen, you also get a four hour mean time to restore services. And that's the service level agreement. Exactly, so okay. if something were to happen on our end and it caused you to lose service, we are gonna have a technician out there within four hours to restore your services. If not, then we're outside of the SLA and penalties usually occur. Generally. Okay, so the, and those right. details are available when they wanna to talk to you. What does that Absolutely. mean? How does that work, right? right? Okay, so, so it sounds like it's pretty serious. It's like, uh, and, and of course the price has to be more because they're buying insurance with it, right? Yeah. But of course they're just like, but I need it. So it's, it's just a cost of business, but it's knowing how to make that right decision. Talk a little bit about the business level services, which yeah. is the, the, the little brother or the little sister of, of yeah. the dedicated. Well, to be honest, yeah, it is the little brother. Uh, Coax has been around for a long time. Yeah, yeah. It's readily available. Um, it is a shared service though. Okay. So you're sharing a line with the rest of the businesses and residential houses that are connected to that local node. Okay. Right? So. Um, I don't want to so scare people. Dedicated but fiber, yeah, and and business is copper, right? Okay. And the fiber is fully private and secure. You're not sharing oh, that connection. Oh yeah, yeah, right? security, yeah. It goes all the way back to the Telco Hotel in Toronto, and you have your own circuit through Kojiko, right? Okay. Now, when you look at the business level service, you're sharing that connection. So at right. seven o'clock, when everybody's on Netflix, or you know, during the weekend, there could possibly be uh, a speed decrease, right? Or right. Traffic per se, right? Yeah, and yeah. that's why they always say on the packages, up to, up to a certain speed. Yeah, 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 okay. So we do try our best to meet that speed, but if it does drop, that's just the nature of the service. Demands are right? demands. demands. But are you're demands. saving some money. Exactly. So you gotta balance that. A lack of security, exactly. performance, save some money, security, performance. Exactly, are you but gonna it pays buy, for itself. are you gonna buy the guaranteed fast track car before you go on the, the re weekend of racing? Or you're gonna stick to your normal everyday driver, right? Yeah. yeah. It really depends how much money you want to spend on your business and if you really need it. So yeah, because there could be times you're like, no, I'm okay. Exactly. Get an email here, get an email there, send a PDF, whatever. It's not the high demand. Exactly. And it fits. So you, that's good. You got you got you can cover many styles of businesses and their needs. Exactly. And Excellent. if you if you have some troubles like asking yourself this or identifying these, you can always reach out to Jason or myself, and we can always. Um, answer those questions with you. Yeah, we can walk them through the needs test. We can. Yep. Put, we got the questions right here. We can put them through the test. Exactly. They can put themselves through the test. Just uh, what was Monday? The internet was down. And how did you survive Tuesday morning? Right. Exactly. And that's a good good practice. Uh, tell us a little bit. Uh, you mentioned um, you have something here about a time you were out in the field. Yes. So this kind of ties into the uh, the dedicated solution. Okay. Um, with these dedicated solution, not only do you get uh, dedicated things on the back end from Kojiko, but you get dedicated equipment. It's guaranteed, like we, we manage all that for you. Okay. You don't have to worry about anything. Now, with best effort solutions or the business cable solutions, 
you may have to wait a day or two till we can get that hardware sent to our technician right. to install it, right? Okay. Yeah. There's a bit of a process. And with this story, I had been cold calling in this building and this customer who had a burnt out modem. Existing Kojiko customer? Existing Kojiko okay. customer had a burnt out modem. And I'm not going to crazy details, but I was in this person's IT room before and it was hot. So <laughs> okay. I'm not sure if it was something to do with our equipment, but nonetheless, the customer was experiencing a pretty rough time because they didn't have phone service, no internet. So he was able to see me on the street, basically, tell me what's going on. And we had done everything to say, you know, it's going to take about two days for my technician to get this taken care of. I had called my manager, my manager had called their manager, and we pushed as much as we could, right. right? Which sounds like it's already above and beyond from the original agreement, but exactly. when people are under fire, they're under fire, right? We're still people, exactly. we still want to help. Exactly, right, right. I want to make sure that I can do my best, right? Yeah. For, to yeah. support my clients. Yeah. So anyways, the customer is understandably upset. It's gonna take this long. So we end up just moving on with our day. We walk down the next street and we see a technician out there. And we spoke to the technician, explained the whole story. And he actually says, hey, I've actually got a, a T37 modem right here, ready to go. Uh, if you're good with it, I can go install it and reset this person. And we got this person back online within half an hour of this whole fiasco going down. And one of the luckiest stories I've ever had at Coach Go. But folks, if it's that important to have equipment constantly going and to have instant results, you either need to get a dedicated internet solution from your provider or get a dedicated specialist for IT like Jason who can respond to those needs right. quickly, right? But if the asset's down, the asset's down. Right? Exactly. Know, that's, that's the concern, right? So I can't make things appear, yeah, right? right? Yeah. <laughs> it was very lucky that I got that, I gotta say. But you were watching out for them, right? You were thinking about it. You weren't just like, sorry, there's nothing I knew. It was, yeah. it, your mind was going and that's you saw the opportunity and you were able to take advantage of it so that was yeah. great excellent excellent story so we have another question here um clients are always asking me this question because mm -hmm. we're the it we support them with the it uh, and it's all about uh getting people connected and they're asking and it's a great question you have there is how can my business or the people in my business communicate better so talk to us a little bit about the 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 philosophies around that or, or how you guys work on that aspect from, from your uh, partnership with your clients. Absolutely. And um, there's multiple ways that your customers can connect to your business, whether it be through a voice solution calling you, right? Um, or faxing you or something, or if they wanted to get through by a data connection, whether it be email or uh, a chat messenger on your website, you always want to make sure that these channels to communicate with your customers are covered, right? So a lot of the way, a lot of the businesses and trends are now starting to move towards an IP style solution. How can voice over IP? Voice over IP, right? right? And how can customers manage um, their own setup and how they communicate with the customers versus not being able to access anything behind this uh, brick wall on the side of your building unless you can, or sorry, this brick sized phone system that. You can't even access you right, don't, you right. Don't, you don't know how to use it right a big classic style exactly so connecting with your customers by voice is getting a lot easier now that we've moved voice to a data solution okay right? yeah 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 so the now the internet's been taken care of yeah. now that we got the foundation laid there's opportunities more flexibility more flexibility okay right and the way that we do that is with a hosted solution so it's hosted and it's managed by CoachGo. Okay. So we take the factor of setting up your own time to to work on set trying to specialize in a phone system, and now we're able to provide that through an offsite service, right? So we take the risk out of you having to set it up by yourself. Um, if something goes down, are you able to fix it on time, and are you able to make changes on the fly? So we're giving you more flexibility to communicate with your customers with this type of solution. Um, I know that a common word used in all this is unified communications. You know, yes, yes. I how agree. can we yeah, unify what does that mean? everything? Yeah, right? yeah. Like, so unify would bring it all together, right? Exactly. Okay. And typically you would want to do that through 
one provider or at least one provider and an IT source to help manage that connection, right? Um, in terms of traffic though, you wanna make sure that that is continuously backed up. Okay. So backed up as in redundancy. Redundancy. Okay. That's another keyword. But uh, I want to kind of talk about redundancy and being able to move your voice traffic if something happens. So are you able to, if something goes wrong with your phone system, can you travel, make that right, traffic move? Right, can you keep right? communication lines open? Exactly. Okay. So yeah, yeah. So what you're, what you're thinking about is um, now that you have the, you're looking at the communications sitting on uh, through the internet now instead of the classic copper lines, what you're, you're saying uh, is the flexibility that if there's a problem with the internet or you're not, there's no internet available, you could use your cellular data plan to continue the communications. Exactly. So it's you've now got that flexibility in this new strategy. Exactly. Right? And, and, and that's what you, you were talking about. And from there, uh, hosted, uh, in, the, in the hosted strategy, the, do they own the phones? Can they buy, can they just monthly the phones? Is yeah. there options in that strategy? CapEx, OpEx, that kind of thing? Is it? So as a managed solution, we try to provide you everything, basically, okay. a one-stop shop. Yep. Now you do have customization where you can buy phones or you can lease phones, right? Do you want to buy a car, lease a car? Okay, so you can, they can personalize stuff. it to their needs and their strategies. Exactly. Great, great. So we manage the equipment, the service, and everything between that in terms of code go on the back end as well. Right, and there's it can be hardware and software in the plan, like they can move, uh, and that's why, can their mobile phones start acting like their phones a little bit? That's correct, so okay. the unified communications basically allows every single device that has internet on it to kind of get into that phone system to connect with your work, right? Right, so any device, anywhere, anytime kind of thing. Correct. So okay. If you take your desk phone with you and you plug it into an internet store somewhere, ten, nine times out of ten, you should be able to make a phone call. Oh, so if, you can even move your desk phone too. Exactly. So it's, If it's the IP phone, right? Right, right, right. But if they had the soft feature as well, that mm -hmm. their computer could be their phone? Your computer, your laptop, uh, your tablet, your cell phone. There right. you go. So you are taking it wherever you go anyways. Exactly. Which is good flexibility in the in that hosted VoIP solution strategy. Exactly. And this and folks, this really isn't a new technology. No, it's you been around for a while. Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, those have been around for quite a few years, right? Yeah, and more and more are coming out all the time, especially apps exactly. on your phone, right? To make calls to, you know, your friends and family, the low cost, long distance. Exactly. Right. So People say, oh, I don't need another cell phone plan or I don't need another cell phone. I don't need another laptop or tablet. You already have these devices. Now it's about connecting it on the internet. Right. Get them unified. Exactly. You can connect back to your customers. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, Scott, that was great. Uh, talking about unified communications, bringing everything mm -hmm. together, devices anywhere, anytime, uh, soft phones, hard phones, mobile phones. You're always connected. Absolutely. But then what comes up is, all right. But does that mean I can't have a desk phone anymore? Are desk phones a thing of the past? Yes. And, and people ask that all the time because yes. there are uh, habits, routines, systems. People have built structures around that. Mm -hmm. And of course they want to know, how does that work? What's, you know, let's talk a little bit about the, 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 the phone that's been on the desk for. Absolutely. Since Grand Bell. <laughs> so phones are not what they used to be, okay folks? <laughs> I mean, people get worked up about having to spend more money on new phones, but as the technology world evolves, your business should too with the phones. Now, again, phones don't do the same thing as they used to. They do more. Oh, right? yeah, 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 yeah. So now these phones, I mean, I know that some of the phones that you've showed me in the past now have video screens on the front. You can yeah, do video yeah. calling with yeah. the phones, right? Yeah. So From I, the desk. I mean, obviously your iPhone can do any, like all Exactly. Stuff, but these are the desk phones. So a desk phone, it's big, it's chunky, it makes sense because it's on a desk, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, to obviously get the most out of this, to this tool is by using the most modern features in these phones. Yeah, so basically the phones that you've showed me now include the voice chat, they do video chat. Um, text messaging. Text messaging, and you can connect these devices through other tools, like your cell phone or your tablet. So it looks like you're still calling from your desk phone. Right, right, right. right. So, so you always have that branding, you always have that yeah. business presence even though using multiple devices. You can consider it your home base phone. 
right. if you want to think right. about it that way, right? And and some jobs are like that. You come in, mm -hmm. you are this role, this task, you're the purchaser, you're, you're the dispatcher, yeah. so you're at that desk all day long. So to have that asset, which yeah. is dynamic and it has value, yeah. and that's why it's not gone. Yeah. Right? There are roles that have it. other roles, like salesperson, or whatever, they may never even come to the office and they're yeah. all in the mobile area. And you should be able to make that decision by yourself. You should be able to know if you need a desk phone or not. But yeah. I wouldn't consider getting rid of them yet. Right, right, right. right I right. wouldn't consider it. Yeah, an organization might hybrid it. They may like, all right, let's go half amount exactly. of phones from the old way because these guys are never, they're all, I, they can kind of walk around in the last couple months and go, well, they're never at their desk anyways. Yeah. Right. But so, how do we keep them in the system still? Right. So yes, how, how do they stay connected? Exactly. Okay. So desk phones are still there, but they're slur they're starting to say role specific, not just carte blanche everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, from here, yeah. uh, in the last year, couple months, when yeah. you're actually working with a prospect and they become a partner and say, hey, yeah, we want on board. Did you actually go through that exercise? And it did come out that they, they said, no, actually, we're, we're only going to go with half the phones we went from our old system. Like, was there an experience that you saw yeah, exactly. that, a change in the marketplace and it actually happened where someone made that decision? So as like the marketplace evolves, more people are working from home. I mean, oh, it, okay. costs, it costs money to have someone at work. Yeah. And I mean, the cost for your facilities, uh, hardware, any like software licenses, you know, if you can save some money and have the same productivity, have someone working at home, yeah. why not, right? Um, now, basically being able to bring that desk phone to your home and keep you connected with everything is how the market is evolving, essentially. Right, now, uh Oh, sorry, I didn't answer your question. Yeah, yeah, Let me get back question, to the question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically... So the dynamics are there, but yes. have you seen people going, you know what, I'm going to go with half the phones. Have exactly. you come across that in, in, in real life? I have come across that. It's, okay. it's mainly for uh, important executives that need to have constant access to the business phone system uh, anywhere in the world. So they'll have a hybrid solution with both, yep. desk phone and uh, soft phone, so they can go anywhere. But I've also seen people who uh, only work off, say, a soft phone. Okay, or, so they went a mobile app. They went right? hard. The, the organization went hard one way and said, "Let's let's try without any phones or exactly minimal." And typically, that's for salespeople on the road. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they still want to keep them in the system. Um, I've seen both where they've been able to purchase soft phones for these uh, mobile users, these users yeah. right? Yeah. But I've also seen where people have. Uh, just going straight to cell phones, to mobile phones. So right? they just the desk phone just went down in that choice. Like, yeah, let's get on the plan, but we exactly. don't need, we don't want desk phones. I've okay. also seen a company that made the employees use their personal cell phones for the business, right? Byod, and we were actually able to bring those devices ah, nice. into our phone system. Right, because your and apps went in, you locked it in, and got it up and running. It went from say a mobile data number that they're constantly using to the internet on their phone that they're using on the app. Right. Right? So times are changing. And that's BYO to bring your own device. Bring your own device. Yeah, so yes. that technology says, okay, so you guys, and they maybe gave them a stipend or a, a share for the internet data plan or whatever. You know, that's kind of how organizations do it, but that, very flexible. Absolutely. Excellent, excellent. Now, we've gone through a number of questions. We got through, uh, we, we talked about how to choose a telecom, uh, telecom partner yeah um what uh, what type of internet would an organization need and and then we got pretty detailed in there which was some very valuable information uh we also talked about um how a business would communicate better and unify and that kind of blended into our our fourth question which was our desk phones needed you know? mm -hmm. so it was kind of more of fortifying that first question which is good um but how how would a uh how would I get a professional evaluation uh, on my environment, right? You know, I got, yeah. I got an in-house IT, you know, and they're working away, or I got an IT partner, but they know it's like, you know, we can research online, all that kind of idea, but tell me kind of what, uh, how does Kojiko work with uh, organizations? on a, what's the proven process? How do you, what's yeah. it, just walk me through you know, first engagements and what you kind of do and how it kind of works uh, to get them to, understand what you can do for them. So what Coach Go has done is they've set up teams of account executives. Okay. And these account executives, they wear multiple hats and we work as almost specialists for these business 
um, solutions. Okay. Right. So you can always reach out to a Coach Go representative. Right. All you do is go to Google, type in uh, Coach Go, find my account executive. Find my account executive. Type in your postal code. Okay. And it'll match oh. you with that person. You can contact them or you can send in a web submission. We want to make this as easy for you as possible. Okay. Right. So that That's allows cool. you to kind of reach out to the professionals. Right. In the industry without having to fork up any money. You can get that opinion right there. Right. Um, however, if you need very uh, de like dedicated service and you need uh, constant attention and um, customized solutions. Very that, personalized, right? Yeah, because you're exactly. in a very, very specific need. I would recommend reaching out to a local IT company, right? Oh, all right, yeah, and work alongside that. Exactly, like okay. IT force. Right, 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 because we could, we could do the analysis of the environment, understand the needs mm -hmm. on the technical side of it. Yeah. And then engage a, a Kojiko business partner. Exactly. Okay. So those are kind of the two professional ways you can go about it. Um, another great tool is YouTube his, or online okay. forums and doing your own research and, and asking other businesses around you. Now, obviously, this is kind of DIY. You're learning as you go. Sure. Right? If you're willing to take the risk to set right, it up. Right. That's time versus money. Exactly. Right? It's better to get to the pros quickly. If you, if, you have a, if you have the time, like you're planning a one year and you want to champion someone in yeah. the business to do the research, then go ahead. But if, the, if time's against you, then that's when the partners can accelerate. Right? Exactly. Yeah. And I've talked to some of the partners down in Niagara, like David Handles and stuff like that. And, and when I talk to them, they're like, oh, we have businesses already in the area. So they already know what kind of feeds, what kind of speeds, what kind of, what's going on down exactly. there. Exactly. And, and so as I, I work with my clients, you know, to, to work with individuals like yourself, mm -hmm. you, you kind of know the lay of the land because you're already servicing people in the area. Exactly. So that speeds things up quickly in the assessment side of what can we deliver and how fast can we get it in there. Exactly. Which I, is advantageous. To be honest, a lot of the resources are right in front of a lot of businesses. People are just afraid to ask but yeah or they don't know or they don't know right they're just like you know exactly like i have two clients down in the uh beansville area and, and it's like wireless for the last you know and that's like mm -hmm. you know coach goes out there and i made a call and i talked to to your guys and they're like yeah we can let's do an assessment let's figure it out and, and they worked alongside me didn't yeah. even waste the client's time right just got it all ready for them first exactly so keep the, the clients are busy right <laughs> so that's exactly. where we can help them save some time. And uh, a lot of these personal business relationships make it easier on the customer. Yeah. You can just go to one source and we already work as a partner, so things happen quicker and more efficiently. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, excellent. Well, Scott, thanks so much. I mean, we, we got yeah, into you. some deepness, we got into some details, yeah. uh, we got some, some good insights on some uh, exercises people can do to check w where their risk is. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's great. So I wanted to thank Scott Guthrow from Kojiko Business thank Solutions you. here and Jason Stick, co-founder of IT Force. And look for other videos and uh, we're going to get this one. Uh, this is our full length feature and then we're going to break it out into our separate questions so they can get right to the, the meat and potatoes so we can really add value uh, with this information. So thanks again, Scott, for coming out. Thanks. And folks, if you have any questions, please don't forget to ask them. Comments below if you need anything. Thank you. <laughs> thanks, buddy. Thank <laughs> you.